On this side, the head, head side.
sir. No, you don't. Oh, John. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How much are they a piece? I'm not telling you that. Can you tell me how many you took? I took. Actually, it was followed up by Christmas. I'll give you $100. We're charging a fee. You know we are. Yeah. Are you 
Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Joe's family and friends, I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to our funeral service this morning, both here in person and those who are watching via live stream. Before we begin our service this morning, I would ask if anyone does have their cell phone with you, if you could please turn it off or turn it on vibrate. It's not to disrupt our service this morning. Before we do begin our formal service this morning, we do have a favorite song of Joe's that we're going to listen to before the service begins. The cares of the world concern me no longer. I have completed this life and my work is done. My family is happy and healthy in their pursuits. I have loved much and I have loved well. To those I leave behind, I hope I will remain in your hearts as you will in mine. Thank you for taking such good care of me. And to all of you who have been my friends, thank you for teaching me about life and love. Today is an important day when we gather together to honor a life and mourn a death. Time stands still for just a moment as we gather here amongst one another. Acknowledge how, Do how Joe touched each of our lives, left an imprint on our hearts, and that our souls are eternally changed. Joseph Eckhart, known better by most as Grandpa Joe, passed away Wednesday, November 4th, 2020, at the age of 90. But his spirit and the life he lived made a difference and will continue to do so, as long as each of you remember him in your hearts and carry the lessons of his life with you. My name is Jason Fletcher, and I have the privilege of serving as the funeral celebrant this morning as we remember the life of Grandpa Joe, 
a son, a husband, a father, a grandfather, a great-grandfather, a brother, an uncle, but most of all, a friend. We gather this morning as a circle of family and friends to say goodbye to Joe, who was caring, kind, but most of all, had a passion for the outdoors. When someone is gone so suddenly, we have to stop, catch our breath, focus on the memories of what was, acknowledge what could have been, and find small amounts of gratitude in the time you had with him. Washington Irving once said, there is sacredness in tears. They are not the mark of weakness, but of power. They speak more eloquently than 10,000 tongues. They are messengers of overwhelming grief and unspeakable love. These moments gathered here today are your times to reflect, to laugh together, to cry together, to gain support from one another, and to carve out a space in your heart for memories of Joe to live on. Let us pray. Dear God of broken hearts, we come together this morning with mixed emotions and in disbelief that Joe is no longer a part of our lives. Joe, who filled such a vibrant part of your world, and we who remain are at a loss to see how we can fill that void. Be with each person here this morning as they seek comfort in memories, in hope and in trust that he is in your loving arms in eternal spirit. We ask for your blessing upon his family and friends, your calm spirit, and the promise of peace. Amen. Joe was born October 1st, 1930 in Toledo, Ohio, to William and Sophia Eckhart. Looking back at the year 1930, the Mickey Mouse comic strip appeared for the first time in newspapers. The first broadcast of The Lone Ranger aired on WXYZ-TV in Detroit. Cleveland's Terminal Tower Shopping Center opened, and Lou Gehrig hit three home runs in a single game for the first time in baseball's history. Joe would share his birth year with actor Clint Eastwood, astronaut Buzz Aldrin, musician Ray Charles, former presidential candidate Ross Perot, and Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor. Over the course of the past week or so, I've had an opportunity to speak with many of you about Joe's life. And certainly we've had an opportunity these last two days to look at some of these priceless photographs that are surrounding us today. I'd like you to close your eyes for a moment and I'd like you to think about a special time that you shared with Joe. And this could have been two weeks ago, two months ago, two years ago, or 20 years ago. But one of those special moments that you're gonna remember about him two weeks from now, two months from now, or 20 years from now. In a few moments, I'm gonna give you an opportunity to share those memories if you wish. And if you can't think of one moment in particular, Think about a special word that you would use to describe Joe. So please close your eyes and listen to these words. When you think of me, please don't cry. I'm not so far away, in fact, I'll be nearby. And when you feel I'm lonely and far from home, remember now that I never walk alone. When you think of me and feel a little sad, always remember that our good times outweigh the bad. When you think of me and it brings a tear to your eye, think of my laughter, my smile, but try not to cry. When you think of me, don't have regrets and wish there were things we could have done. Because when it comes to happiness and memories, we all have surely won. So when you think of me, here's what I want you to do. Remember my love and remember that I'm not that far from you. As we begin to reflect on Joe's life this morning, I have selected two scripture readings that I would like to share with you. Both of these readings speak to the essence of our lives on earth and the eternal peace that Joe now shares in. The first from the book of Ecclesiastes. To everything there is a season and a time and a purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die 
A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to get and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to cast away. A time to rend and a time to sow. A time to keep silence and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace. In the second, the familiar words of Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures, and he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For 90 years, Joe was with us in this dwelling place on earth as one of God's creations. I'm going to ask a question to all of you gathered here this morning that may seem a bit irrelevant, but I think it pulls all things together relative to Joe's life on earth. And I ask you this simple question, have you ever thought about all the doors that you pass through in a single day? Most likely you've never sat back and thought about that. We take doors for granted when they're a part of our lives as long as they open when we enter a new place. They close and lock at night when we want to keep others out of our homes when we sleep in the evenings. Those are the physical doors we pass through. Glass doors, wood doors, metal doors, car doors. Those physical doors lead us to new places. The post office, the grocery store, church on Sunday morning, the doctor's office. Those are the physical doors we pass through and don't even bother to think about them. But the virtual doors we pass through throughout our lives are the doors that are most important. Those virtual doors lead us to new jobs, new relationships, new people we meet along the way, the first day of school, meeting new friends, graduating from high school, joining the military, those friends that last forever. Growing up in South Toledo, Joe graduated from Libby High School in 1949. He would share the family home with his parents, his brother Eldon, his sister Shirley, and youngest sister Joetta, who was born around the same time that Joe was graduating from high school. Following graduation from Libby, Joe began working for Dollar Jarvis. And just two years, two short years later, in 1951, he began his service in the United States Army, where he served two years during the Korean War. Following his military service, Joe returned to Toledo, where he married the love of his life, Patricia. Joe had obtained a license in both heating and air conditioning and sheet metal work, but he quickly found that that work wasn't for him. In 1965, Joe began working as a commercial truck driver as a member of Teamsters Local 20. And over the years, he drove with Shell Oil, along with many other local and national carriers, working primarily in the transportation corridor between Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and Chicago, Illinois, making Toledo the perfect place to live. In 1995, Joe retired after 30 years of service with the Teamsters. Outside of work, Joe had four passions in his life. In no particular order, family, golf, hunting, and fishing. As a young man, along with his father and grandfather, Joe developed a passion for the outdoors. 
He began hunting with his family as a child and was proud of the first buck that he shot at 16 years old while hunting in Michigan. He developed a lifelong passion for deer and small game hunting and he continued to share this with his grandchildren and great-grandchildren. He went deer hunting and small game hunting with family and friends countless times over the years in Michigan, Ohio, and Pennsylvania, even heading out just one year ago. As you can see by the numerous photographs around us today, he was proud of the trophy winning bucks that he brought home. A former neighbor of Joe's on Springwood Drive shared a story with Karen recently on how Joe scarred her children for life. When Joe came home one day from hunting with a prize winning buck, he thought it would be a good idea to string it up on his television antenna tower out back of his house to keep it cool. The curious neighbor children next door asked Joe, what was the deer hanging from the tower? His response, I killed Rudolph. <laughs> this neighbor said this was the only time that she ever heard Pat raise her voice at Joe, the day she found out that he told the neighbor children Rudolph was gone. During the warmer months of the year, he enjoyed fishing both locally and at the family cottage in Harrison, Michigan. In recent years, Joetta would spend the summers with Joe at the family cottage. And the first words out of his morning, out of his mouth in the morning, were, "Are we going fishing today?" To complete his love of the outdoors, he always found time to squeeze in a round of golf with family, friends, or in his retirees' golf league. A few moments ago, I shared with you the words of Psalm 23. And in preparation for today's service, I found an alternative version of Psalm 23 for golfers. <laughs> the Lord is my caddy, I shall not whiff. He maketh me to drive straight down green fairways. He leadeth me over the still waters. He restoreth my swing, and he leadeth me in the paths of truthfulness for the game's sake. Yea, though I pitch through the valley of the shadow of the woods, I will fear no bunkers, for thou art with me. Thy wedge and thy putter, they comfort me. Thou preparest a line before me in the presence of my hazards. Thou anointest my stroke with confidence that the cup will not runneth over. Surely birdies and eagles shall follow me all the rounds of my life, and I will dwell in the clubhouse of the Lord forever. Hunting, fishing, and golfing aside, Joe's true love was spending time with his family. He enjoyed traveling on many memorable vacations, including a trip to Alaska and Australia. Although 18 years younger than him, he had a special bond with his sister, Joetta. Joetta looked up to Joe not only as a big brother, but also sought counsel and took advice from him as she was 18 years younger and their father had passed away at a young age. In recent years following Joe's stroke, Joetta stayed with Joe to help care for him, to help him remain active and enjoy the lifestyle that he was accustomed to. In 90 years, Joe has seen many ups and downs. He's lived to see 14 diverse men serve as President of the United States, lived through terrorist attacks on the United States and the world, witnessed deadly hurricanes and tsunamis, the invention of the computer and the cellular telephone. Joe gave each of you gifts of kindness, graciousness, and love. These gifts are his legacy to you, his legacy that now lives on in each of you. Today, Joe has entered the doors of new life and is now at peace. We can't think of this as the day that we close the door on his life, but the day where the doors of his life are opened in each of your hearts, and the memories and experiences you had with him will become memories that will last forever. A few moments ago, I asked you to think about one of those special times that you shared with Joe. I'd like to offer an opportunity for anyone gathered here this morning to share those memories. 
I'm going to begin uh, with a re reflection uh, that Karen had written about her dad. And after I conclude, if there's anyone who wishes to share, uh, we'll offer an opportunity to do so. There is no way to cover my dad's long and full 90 years. There are so many things he packed into living that we could be here for years. Everyone enjoyed his stories of everything he did in his life and they entertained us for hours. He lived life to the fullest. My hope is to remember all of the stories he shared. Dad had a passion for traveling. You wouldn't think with all the miles he put on driving truck that he would want to be a homebody on vacation. The summer vacations. He would load up the family in the car and we would take off to where he and mom had decided to take us. Mom slept in the front seat while Linda and I fought in the back seat while being car sick. <laughs> when we would get to our first stop, he usually would take us swimming. We covered lots of miles throughout the United States and Canada, mom always finding the historical spots to stop along the way. In later years, he traveled to Estonia, Russia, Sweden, Alaska, the 1996 Olympics, Australia, camping in Maine and Drummond Island. He took Brian and Amy fishing in Tennessee. And for 10 years, he was a winter Texan after he retired and always talked of renting a houseboat and sailing down a river. Hunting and fishing were a big part of his life. For years, he and his buddies would hunt the mountains of Pennsylvania the week after Thanksgiving. Dad took them out to find his kill bunnies and get the biggest buck possible on Cousin John's land in Logan, Ohio. They had a friendly rivalry who could get the most small game and the biggest deer. He could never understand Brian and Amy's hunting from tree stands because deer usually don't fly. Over the years, his buddies bowed out of deer hunting as he began to grow old, so he began to take Brian and Amy when they had grown old enough to hunt with him. There was always a spirit of one-upsmanship. Who got the biggest bucks and the most rabbits? Stories came from there being a certain groundhog chasing Brian down a railroad track while he was holding a gun, or Amy jumping out of the van in her long underwear to shoot a bunny near the road. Linda and I had an agreement we would bail the grandkids out of jail, but leave him behind. <laughs> he also had a love of fishing and was able to enjoy that even after his stroke. He spent much time fishing at the cottage and also went charter fishing on Lake Erie in Valdez, Alaska. Another passion was eating. When he and Richard drove back and forth to Texas, the route they went by had the best fill in the blank. Dad was good at noticing children and how they liked to protect their plates around him as he was known to sneak things off of them. Mine was fair game because while the food was warm, I was still a picky eater. If you ever got a chance to eat with dad or his grandkids and great grandkids, you'll now notice how much they protect their plates. Dad would always ask, what was being served for the next meal before he left the table. He was known to help himself to Christmas cookies before they were passed out to the recipients. Your loving daughter, Karen. Is there anyone else who has a memory of Joe that they would like to share? I just want to add to his golf thing, thing that he did have two holes in one. At he did. Ottawa Park Golf Course. Ottawa Park. Okay. Anyone else? I'd just like to comment that Kane served years to a farm to hunt, and the thing that was eminently clear through the entire time was how much he loved his family. And uh, I don't know about the hunting, but he never seemed to without a buck or a barrel, but he loved his family. A kind, pleasant family. A good uncle. 
Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Let us pray. For our brother Joe, let us pray to the Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even in death, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Lord God, you have entrusted Joe to our care, and now you embrace him in your love. Take him into your keeping together with all of your children who have died, and comfort us who remain to seek to do your will and know your saving peace. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bow our heads and pray together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Joe. Acknowledge we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive Joe into the arms of your mercy and into the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Let us go forward in the name of Christ. Amen. Joe, in the words of C.S. Lewis, we're not saying goodbye. We're saying, see you later. Amen. This will bring the funeral home portion. Yes, Karen. I don't either, because I copied and pasted it. Okay. I'm going to try to remember this. The last paragraph that I wrote was to thank everybody who had taken care of my dad. My Aunt Joetta, with all of her devotion and help, kept him very active and very, very happy. To all the, the visiting angels, um, they came, they took care of him, but mostly to my sister. My sister, who gave up most of her life in the last years to take care of him, to make sure he was happy, happy and healthy, all the way from the coffee click at 8 p.m. when he'd drive down and get his coffee and interrupt your life again, um, to all of the trips you took him on, to the time that you spent with him. I just wanted to say thank you. You are my big sister. And you helped me up through all of this. And I can never thank you enough for that. This will bring the funeral home portion of our services to a conclusion this morning. As we prepare to leave for Toledo Memorial Park Cemetery for our graveside services and military honors, I'd like to give each of you an opportunity to step by the casket one last time and say your final goodbyes to Joe. Those who are gonna be helping out as casket bearers or pallbearers this morning, I'm gonna ask that once you've stepped by the casket, if you'll remain in the foyer area, we will bring the casket to you and give you some further instructions at that time.
Those who are going to be driving in procession with us to the cemetery, I'm going to ask that once you step to your cars, you turn your headlights on to high beam for us, please. That does help recognize you as a part of our procession as we make our way to Toledo Memorial Park. So at this time, I'm going to ask everyone, please remain seated until your row is dismissed. We're going to be in, begin with the folks in the side room over here, and then we'll begin in the back of the room and work our way forward. Once again, thank you for coming. Oh, around and around. <laughs> yeah, you set him out with a 
the squirrels up. They get their little mouse